Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a bracelet in bead crochet, but first of all we're gonna discuss scheme or pattern for the bracelet that I have chosen. It's a floral pattern and um, then I'll show you how we start crocheting, bead crocheting and how to finish the bracelet with the end cups. So let's start with the scheme. For this technique, whatever scheme you get, this is the general or overview that you will get. So basically, you will see three columns on the left, here, and then on the right you will see the sequence of the beads that needs to be strand on the thread. So let's start from the information at the top. First of all, you'll see the pattern name. I called it floral spectrum and then the circumference means how many beads are in a circumference of your necklace or bracelet so right here it's eight and then repeat of colors is how many beads of different colors repeats in one report this is called one report so basically one whole pattern not repeated and then you also see the rows per repeat a um, total number of the rows and the total number of the beads you're using for one report. For this particular one you're using 416 beads. And then you're gonna see the color of the beads needed. This is up to you which color you want. So you can change according to the scheme. For example if you want orange instead of yellow you can put it in but don't forget to change it in the um, sequence of the beads. So how do we stream the beads? We'll, we'll start from the upper left corner and go down. So here you have two light blue ones and then four white ones. So you stream to the thread two light blue ones and four white ones and then two dark blue ones. And then you go down and then go up and stream again. So basically right here I numbered how many column of the beads you need to string to your thread. It is 10. When you're done one report of stringing, what I usually do, I crochet one report, measure how long it is, and from this calculate how many reports I need for particular lengths. What you also can do is string five or six reports simultaneously so it basically finish one and then start over at the beginning and finish the other five or six and then you crochet bracelet or necklace or whatever fragment if you don't have enough you always can add I'll show you in my next videos how to tricks and tips to the bead crochet for example if you're thread is over and you still have beads but you don't have enough thread how to transfer to another thread and how to continue your crocheting. If we look at the left you're gonna see three columns one two three the first one is a draft where I usually create my pattern um, the second one is the corrected pattern. So basically if you take your fragment or your bracelet or necklace and cut it across and open, this is how the pattern looks in the open state. The third one is the most important because we usually look at the third one, third column, just to see how the pattern will look like. And based on that, if we like it, we'll choose the scheme. If we don't, then we'll go to another one. So, for this third column, it, it shows the actual look of the necklace, bracelet or fragment. That's about it. So, what can be different in different patterns, schemes, is circumference of the beads so this is pretty small one, it's only 8 beads, but that can go up to, well I did up to 25 beads. For coin purses you can even do up to 100. 
and then definitely whatever you call your partner is different right um, so this report can actually this is very small it can actually go to up to different pages so up to 10 pages that's what I've seen but as soon as we go to the crocheting egg or purses I'll show you the how the different um, reports look and how the schemes are different from bracelet eggs and purses so this is all about the scheme and now I'm gonna show you how to actually bead crochet okay as for the materials we already discussed with you schemes that I have used so for the materials I used Japanese um, seed beads 11 size and also I used the check beads also size 10 or 11 you can always use the bigger size of the beads if the smaller one doesn't work for you I know it's difficult at the beginning so the more you get practice the more advanced you get you can start using the size 11 or 10 seed beads but for now I would recommend using size 8 or even 6 then I use mercerized cotton 100% cotton um, size 20 which is very fine and I can actually put the eye of a needle in it to string the beads very well because if you choose the bigger size of the cotton thread like 10 it wouldn't fit the eye of the needle that I'm using also I'm using the bead caps bead crochet caps or leather cord caps which fits my rope of circumference 8 beads and then the lobster claw with such nice chain with their butterfly accent and I'll give you the link where you can purchase those for the hook I used the one millimeter one boy uh, but you can also use uh, 0 0.75 millimeters whatever works best for you and also scissors just to cut the thread that's all about the materials so okay now I'm gonna show you how to start bead crochet remember that we discussed that our scheme has 8 beads circumference so you need to do um, 8 chains first so this is how it's done you make a first chain as a crocheter you might be more skillful than I am so okay let me do it and then I'll show you how you do the next ones okay that's the first one we don't count it so you need to do eight more so here's one two three four five six seven and eight now you need to make a circle and connect it go to the first one see where I'm going and connect it with a slip stitch so just connect two chains together here you go that's what you should get the circle and the chains now because we have eight beads in the first row just count eight beads one two four six eight and move it to your crocheting close to your crocheting why eight beads because the first row and 
each other one consists of eight beads so you wouldn't miss anything so move one bit closer go to the first chain like this and do a slip stitch everything in here is done with a slip stitch so this is what you should get do seven more sli slip stitches you can do it either with me or by yourself two one bead at a time three four oops, five three more to go six seven and eight so now your first row is done I'll show you in a second. This is how it looks. Don't worry that it doesn't look as an actual bead crochet. It is. It will straighten up. Again, count eight more beads. Two, four, six, eight. This is the number of beads for the second row. Move it to your crocheting. Important point. Go to the hole with the first bead of the first row. Make sure that it's on the right of your hook. Move one bead of the second row, the first bead, and do a slip stitch like this. Two more. Don't make your crochet in too tight as it will be hard for you to crochet. So now you see how it turned out. Again, I'm going to show you one more time. Go to the second bead, make sure it's on the right. Move one more and do a slip stitch. So this is what you get. Repeat the procedure for all of them. One bead at a time. Every bead of the first row should have one bead of the second row. Total of 16. So this is how you crochet look. See how the first row turned horizontal, the beads, instead of, and the second row still looks vertical. The more rows you do, the more horizontal row you get. On the next few seconds, I'll show you the one crocheted report. So here is the piece that I have crocheted. So right now you already can see the bottom of the flowers. So the first report ends up here. So we can measure it with the ruler and see what's the length of it. So it's approximately two inches um, for the report. From that you can calculate whatever length you need for bracelet, necklace or fragment. And I will show you now how the crocheting looks at the middle. Maybe it will be more useful to you and maybe it will help you somehow. So do you see this yellow bead? I'll go with the hook under it 
and put it on the right. Then I put one bead closer and do a slip stitch. Here you go. And now you can see how the yellow one goes and the blue one, stuck blue, goes under it. And I'll do the same with the next one. So I go under duck bead, put one duck bead closer and do a slip stitch through oh didn't work. Let's try again. Oh see again. So whenever you're done the lens you want you could put the cups on. So this is the bead crochet cups that I use. So you basically just glue them on, put the glue in inside the cup, don't put it on the rope because the glue absorbs by the thread and doesn't really glue very well. So just put it in the cap and attach the your rope. Just hold it for a few seconds and then put your glued piece away for usually like four six hours should be good and then you can attach the clasp i chose the lobster clasps like this with the butterfly because it's a flower pattern at which is trending in spring and summer so butterfly should go very well with the flowers so after you attached your and caps and lobster claw. This is what you get, your finished piece. After you dried it out for four or six hours, I would make it at least two hours because you don't want your end caps to be detached. This is how your final piece should look. The pattern can be found in my Etsy shop or on my website. And again, the lens you can vary, as you know, as well as the caps. So the caps can be different colors, different shapes, etc. But this is how it looks. And um, you can find a variety of pattern in my shop. Or I can make a custom one for you, as well as the bracelet too. Now I'll show you more bracelets that I have. with the different patterns. Pretty sure that you saw those nautical ones, which looks pretty good. They are more thicker than the first one that we did. And then there's these ones, which also can be made. I also have the pattern available. Also this one. And bunch of different ones. So there's a snowflake one, geometrical one. I will show you in the future videos how to do this. It's a 3D bead crochet alternating the different um, size of different beads. It's pretty fun to make too. So bear with me and I hope you like this video. I want to see your comments. I want to see if you like it or not and maybe some improvement suggestions or some questions that you have so I can help you to master this technique. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.